Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I am recording this actually from my camp today. Here we are. We'll see how this goes. I try to get away from every place to make sure that I'm able to do this without too much distraction. There's enough distraction with the squirrels and the birds and everything else. Well, once again, I'm going to continue to not monetize. So let me know if they put commercials in. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, but if they take over and put commercials in, then I'll bring mine back online because I'm not going to let them make money off of my videos and not let me. All my numbers still have not rebounded. In the last 30 days, I have had three subscribers. They're not allowing people to see these videos. You have to help by sharing them. That's all we can do. And even what you do may not work. I've had a number of you tell me before that you put comments up and then have them deleted. <clears throat> I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to put videos up here regardless of what YouTube wants. The key is, is whether or not this is my primary video posting. I'll switch to Rumble and make it my primary site and this a secondary site. And even if I don't post videos here, I will provide a link. If nobody's seeing them relative to what I've done before, <clears throat> then I'll just have to bring Rumble up. I've only got 143 subscribers over there, but that's okay. That's a good place to start. I'll continue to put links here to my videos there. I won't put the videos here. I won't give YouTube a chance to, to mess with them, but I'll put a link here. They may choose to delete those, but you need to as we're prepping for the end times, you need to be prepping. I got people walking by, so I'm going to go ahead and stop for a second. This is what I have to deal with every day. Okay, I'm back. They're just neighbors, and I have to chit chat a little bit. If I don't, I can't talk about God to people that need it. Now, most of the time when I'm talking to neighbors or talking to other people in the camp, it goes on deaf ears. But occasionally I find someone that I can talk to. <clears throat> and I listen. You have to listen to find out what people's needs are. You can't pray for people if you don't know what their needs are. All right. So I'm just going to quickly, oh, I got flies again. I put a fly strip up. It caught one fly. Products are just not what they used to be. <clears throat> I need to probably bring one and put it outside. So if I open my tent door, they don't go. Phew. Okay. Uh, let's see where we're at this morning. Just a couple of quick headlines. Turkey wants to allow Ukraine into the United Nations. NATO, I should say. United Nations don't need another Israel-hating country, so NATO would be the correct term. <clears throat> so that they would be protected by the other NATO states. Now, Russia doesn't want it, but Russia doesn't want anybody protecting other countries as a group that includes the United States. Because we're the only ones who were capable of stopping them. We couldn't fight our way out of a paper bag right now. The only thing that we are capable as a nation of fighting is our people within 
they don't do what the government wants, they can come out and get us. Why would the IRS buy millions of rounds of ammunition? They didn't plan on using it. I've got such a bright light behind me. It's hard for the light that's on top of my camera to do much good. What have I got, a plane going over? Yeah. A little single engine. It looks like a piper. So I'm blocking my face. The camera doesn't know how to adjust. This is why they have great big gigantic spotlights they put out on sets. They have a Fresnel lens on them most of the time that diffuse the light, but sometimes they put a, a leak up a spotlight type. Okay. We're waiting on the rapture. That's really all we're waiting on now. And if you don't believe that there's a rapture, Read Revelation 12. And I'm going to start in, Rev in Revelation 12, verse... The first one is the Revelation 12 sign, which we saw in, what, 2017? It's going to be... Next year will be seven years. It's six years this year. That applies, six applies to man, so maybe that ties this in. Anyhow, there's no way you can calculate the rapture. It's not designed to do that. Other than the fact that there's nothing left to prevent it from happening. 12.3, and another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, the devil. Having said seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head, his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to earth. They live in heaven. This is the slums down here. They don't want to live down here. But he has a purpose. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child. Now this is prophecy. There are parallels, but it's a prophecy. It's not specifically talking about Jesus, who we'll see is the leader of this group. She bore a male child who was to rule over all nations with a rod of iron. That was the, that's the description of Jesus ruling over the millennium. Remember when he comes back in the clouds for the second coming, not the rapture, he's got a multitude with him. All of us who go up in the rapture come back with him in the multitude to rule with the iron fist. And your child was caught up. That word is harpazo. There's no definition problem we know exactly what it means. Caught up means to basically snatch away, pull off the earth. Why? Pull it to be caught up to God and his throne. The purpose of that is to get us away from Satan and all of his angels coming down here. It's real clear. This is a very good definition of the rapture. Now, there are three raptures in the Bible, but this is the primary one. Now there can be arguments over which one's which. That's okay, as long as you believe in rapture. And like I always say, as long as you believe in the gospel, the rest of this is academic. Since, since the rapture as a pre-tribber is the first thing to happen pretty much, we don't have to worry about all the rest of the book. The book is written for academia for those that are left behind. <clears throat> so anyhow, there's your rapture reference. We can also go to Thessalonians if you want, and there's other 
vague references. There's kind of a reference at the end when Jesus is talking, but most of the time he's talking about his second coming. Okay, so we're going to turn to Daniel 9. Daniel was the most quoted prophet, Jesus' favorite prophet, if you will. This is where we get all the stuff that everybody talks about. There's a little bit in Ezekiel and in Isaiah, but... Daniel is the big one for this. The beginning of Daniel 9, he's praying for the people. Now, some of it is stuff that's coming up on him soon. He knew they were in trouble. He's part of the Babylonian conquest. the lion's den and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to turn to 9.20. <clears throat> now I was, while I was speaking, praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord our God for the holy mountain of God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel whom I have seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached out about the time of the evening offering. And he informed me and, I, and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I have come forth to give you skill to understand. God will do this for everybody. If it's important that we do something for God and we don't understand it, and we have to, here, explain it. When Jesus talked in parables, it wasn't for the disciples and the apostles. That was to keep the people that are non-believers from ever figuring out what he's talking about. Only those who want to know God are going to find out about God. Everybody else, is, they're going to stay ignorant. God's not going to help them to live their own lives apart from God. They want to be without God, they, they're without the advice too. <clears throat> okay, and it comes in and says, uh, Daniel, I've come forth to give you skill to understand. At the beginning of your supplications, the command went out, and I have to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. There are two really big main angels in here. I mean, God's got a lot of angels. Satan stole some of them, but he didn't steal them all. God's got, I don't know, millions, billions. I don't know how many angels. There's a lot. Angels would be considered aliens today, and Satan will bring his aliens to earth eventually. That's why it will be easy for them to promote the lie that aliens abducted us because they will be probably seen at least by some okay so anyhow <clears throat> here's the vision 70 weeks are determined for your people and your holy city to finish the transgressions to make an end of sins <clears throat> and to reconcile for the iniquity to bring in everlasting righteousness it's not time that's going to cure them. It's what happens during that time. The 69th week is key. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, there will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. 69 weeks. That 69th week basically ended when Jesus rode into town on a donkey. The street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublesome times.
And after 62 weeks, the Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. <clears throat> and the people and the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a be like a flood. They will storm in there, just coming over the the walls, and they will destroy Jerusalem, kill a million or so, scatter the rest, enslave some of them, and they will destroy the temple. We know this happened in 70 A.D. <clears throat> Even though the calendars are wrong, it's interesting that that's 70 A.D. Until the end of the war, desolations are determined. It will be laid to waste, and the Roman government is going to declare that land, Palestine. They're the ones that coined that phrase there for the Palestinians, the Roman government. Why? Because he didn't want the Jews coming back. So he gave it a name that the Muslims in the area, the Palestinians, would relate to. But they were still nomads. They didn't care. <clears throat> And, it, you know, it goes back and forth. We had the Crusades in there, and they captured Jerusalem back, and then they lost it again. And it's just wars and rumors of wars have been going on from the beginning. <clears throat> then he, we're talking about the prince who is to come, then he shall confirm, confirm a covenant with many for one week. We've had 69 weeks. we got one week coming it's not here yet. The prince who is to come is part of the Romans, part of the Roman Empire. Now he could have picked something like the Kurdish army or someplace where he could have come from, but no, he picked the Roman Empire. It covered from the UK to Persia all the upper part of the Mediterranean. It was big, so go ahead and guess where he's going to come from. We don't know. He could be from any number of those countries. And there's all kinds of speculation as to who and what he's going to be. He's going to appear to be Christ. So when they say, well, he's going to come back maybe as a, a gay leader. Not if he's trying to be Christ, he's not. He may tolerate it as the Antichrist, but he himself is going to be Christ-like. When I'm having, it's, it's a cool day, even though the, it's going to get hot today. The clear sky and everything. I'm having pumpkin spice coffee. Normally that's a fall treat. All right, where was I? Let's get back into this. Okay, confirm the covenant with many for one week. Not the whole world, just with many. It's basically the, the Middle East, because that's the only ones that really care. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. That's the midway point of the tribulation, as it's called. Technically, it shouldn't be called that, but that's that's okay. We don't need to talk about that today. But in the middle, he will bring an end to sacrifice, which means that they have to have a sacrifice. And there will be a temple. And on the wing of abominations shall be the one who makes desolate without void desolation is it's just it's the way israel was until it was reformed there was nothing there mark twain came to israel 
I think in the 30s or 40s, I forget when. And he basically said it's the most desolate place he's ever seen. He's never going back. There's nothing of consequence there. Well, they had destroyed everything biblical that they could think of. Nobody lived there. Nobody was farming. So when those gave them their land back, they didn't really think they were giving them much. But look what they've done with it. Look at their cities, their skyscrapers, their farming, their technology. God can help his people even when they're disobedient. <clears throat> even until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate. They're going to get a lot. And they're not going to be happy with what they're going to get. There is a cost to defying God. And these are people that are his chosen and they shouldn't be defying him, but they are. They're prospering on earth. What are they storing up for heaven? Nothing. They're doing their works. But they're not promoting. I mean, there are Orthodox Jews over there who are doing what they're supposed to do or what they think God wants. They're not always right on that for sure. We'll talk about them later. But the majority of the Jews in Jerusalem are not practicing God-worshipping Jews. They're there because they're persecuted around the world, and that's where they go to get it away. And they think that's going to keep them safe, and it's not. It's God that's going to keep them safe, and they're not having anything to do with him. Okay, I'm going to turn to Daniel 12. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. No matter how bad it's been, and they've had a number of wars. I mean, there was a quick war right at the beginning when they became a nation. We know about the 67 war where they got Jerusalem back because it wasn't part of the original land grant. So 1948, they get it. 67, there's another war. And they've been at war, literally, since then. It just hasn't been a, quote, war. No. They've gone off into the territories recently around them, West Bank, things like that, where they've given in to this land for peace lie. But our government has basically helped push we don't understand the Middle East. That's why we shouldn't be involved in negotiation. These people don't want peace with Israel at any cost. They want the death of Israel at any cost. So you give them land. Okay, some people move in, they set up homes, and then the bad guys step in and they take over. And they hide behind women and children because they're cowards. Satan's a coward. He really is. But he's a useful tool, apparently, for God. All loving God can't punish people, but he has somebody willing to do it for free. All he has to do is say, okay, you can have them. Just don't do this, like he did with Job. You can only have them for a while. Some of the things coming, the seals and judgments, are things that will last for a little while, but not harm the chosen that are still around. There will be Christians around during the tribulation. Now, maybe they weren't a proper Christian when the rapture happens. You've got to follow the rules of being a Christian to be part of that group to leave. Some are sitting on the fence. We've got letters to seven churches telling us the different levels of Christian believers. Be the ones from Philadelphia. Okay. At the time you people shall be delivered, even, let's see, where was it? Such as never since there was a nation, even to that time. 
at that time your people shall be delivered, every one who was found written in the book were adopted as Gentiles, so we're in the book too. We will be delivered. That's our tribulation rapture, pre-tribulation rapture. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life. And apparently everybody's coming up at that time, some to everlasting contempt. <clears throat> those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. Those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal this book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro. We can travel now better than ever before. We can be around the world in a day. It would take them a day to go from one town to the next. And I, Daniel, looked up and there stood two others, one on the river bank and the other on the other river bank. And one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river. So we got three. How long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? And I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters. Jesus. And he held up his right hand and his left hand to to heaven and swore by him who lives forever but it shall be for the first of time times and half a time 1260 days you can that's another study you can look it up for when the power of the holy people have been completely shattered all these things shall be finished although I heard I did not understand you don't understand, ask God. You shouldn't be even reading this Bible without asking God to explain it. Even John 3.16, if taught by the Spirit, is going to be better than reading it alone. Although I heard, I did not understand, then I said, My Lord, what will be the end of these things? And he says, Daniel, go your way, for your words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. We're at the end. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise will understand. Because the wise have trusted God. That's my addition. From the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. That's another study. But basically, till the very end. But you go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of days. He will basically die and sleep, as it's called, and come out at the end. Daniel has basically told us what's coming. We don't know the timing. It's not important. It's above our pay grade. We know the order of things. We just don't know when they start. Doesn't matter. This is God's plan. He planned it at the beginning. So he doesn't have to worry about figuring out what's coming next. He already knows. That's why we don't have to worry about anything. Now, many, and I say many, far more than normal, are beginning to predict this year just because they see what's going on. They can't imagine that we could be living in a world where we're teaching children about their sexuality at a young age. And if you don't like it, you can change it. 
you're not allowed to vote at that age because we know you can't make good decisions as children, but they can make a decision that will affect their life forever. It's chaos. Create as much chaos as you can. It's Satan's way. He always does stuff like that. And he's got people out there helping him because they believe in the world, which is the devil's. If they believed in God, they wouldn't tolerate this stuff. And they don't have to have a lot of people. It takes very little. It takes one person to stand up against Satan to get him to go away. And apparently, it's not enough for this time frame. Under normal conditions, I think it would be, but this time frame, because we're in the end times, and we're about to leave, we can't change the course of history, which is what's coming, the history of the future, which we already have defined in this Bible, which means it's technically not history. Not to God, anyway. Okay, be safe. Pray for one another. Pray for me in this channel. I'll try to hang on for a little bit longer, but they're basically, nobody's getting to see this channel anymore. I've got a few of you dedicated that watch my videos, and I'm grateful for you guys. But it's not reaching out to anybody anymore. They've pretty much stopped it. I, you know, wasn't making much money on it, but now I'm virtually making nothing. So, they can't tempt me with that anymore. There's no reason for me to stay here, and if I leave, they'd be happy. So they're doing everything they can to make it difficult for me to do what I'm doing. A lot of you comment, and I don't see the comments. I have to search through them manually to look for comments. I'm supposed to get a flag up the top says I've got comments. They're not doing that. So if I don't get to them right away, it's because I forget to go back and search. They're making it difficult because this is Satan running social media. Facebook and Zuckerberg don't like the competition of Twitter, who's supposedly under the control of Musk who isn't necessarily an angel by any means. We don't know for sure what he is. He, he's not an out, outward Christian, but he's pretending to be nice. I don't know. He may be okay, but I don't. he's not speaking out for God like he should be if he were a re real Christian. But he's changed Twitter, supposedly. So Facebook comes up with their next, their version of it. They want to control people even more. I'm not on Facebook. Well, I have a small presence, maybe 20 people, just friends and family that haven't got any other way to keep up with what I'm doing. And that's all I want on there. I'm not taking invites. I'm not taking requests. But I'm on Twitter. I've got, I don't know, five, six, seven thousand. I don't remember how many followers over there. Most of those from my entertainment business. But I post my messages there, my, my scriptures and that. I'm on LinkedIn, which was my business. Social media, when I had my corporations. I've run corporations, so I know how to do business. Keep looking. I hope those that are predicting this year are right. We've got some important things coming up. Digital currency this month, we'll see how that goes. We have the 9th of Av, which is the morning time for Israel. A lot of bad things happening on that date, including the destruction of both temples. Come on, flies. I my, I'll put another fly strip outside. I actually caught one inside. 
only one. And I've run into it myself like 10 times. Get all over you and you pull it away. Fly strips. I've never had flies. This is the first time I've had flies. I don't know what it is. It's the, it's the amount of moisture we got, maybe. I don't know. We have an ungodly amount of moisture. Rain, wind. It is not normal. Okay. Be safe. We are in the end times, there's no doubt about it. But we don't know the day of the rapture. It's got nothing to do with the verse that says we won't know the day. That's the second coming, we won't know the day. But there's nothing about the rapture as to when. All right, until we meet in the skies, God bless.